Hello, Temple friends. Welcome again to TempleCast 2020. I'm Jim Giannotti, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. It's good to have you with us for this 29th episode. Today I'm going off lectionary, although there are so many different versions of the lectionary that I could just say that I'm using the Giannotti branch of the lectionary. And from that branch, we're going to hear scripture and prayer for Wednesday, May 20th. Let's begin with this from the Book of Common Prayer. O God, your blessed Son became poor for our sake and chose the cross over the kingdoms of this world. Deliver us from an inordinate love of worldly things that we may seek you with singleness of heart, behold your glory by faith, and attain to the riches of your everlasting kingdom where we shall be united with our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is number 47. O clap your hands together, all you peoples. O cry aloud unto God with shouts of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over the, all the earth. He shall subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a shout of triumph, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our King. For God is the king of all the earth. Think upon his mighty acts and praise him with a song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered with the people of the God of Abraham. For the very mighty upon the earth have become the servants of the Lord, and he is very highly exalted. We'll now hear two readings from the New Testament letters. The first comes from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. And here is a stanza from the poem entitled, St. Patrick's Breastplate, to remind us that God's will is to gather us to him. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need. The wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my guard. And finally, here is a short reading from James, chapter 4, verses 13 through 16a. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. 
As it is, you boast in your arrogance. Route 80 cuts across central PA from Sharon, on the border with Ohio, to the Delaware Water Gap, where it crosses into the greatest state in the nation, New Jersey. Sorry, I grew up there. I gotta give props to my home state. About a third of the way across PA, there are two signs, one on either side of Interstate 80. Both signs say the same thing. Highest point on Interstate 80, east of the Mississippi. Elevation, 2,250 feet. One year, shortly after Christmas, I was driving from Ohio to New Jersey to visit my parents. At that time, I enjoyed listening to the radio shows of well-known Christian speakers like Chuck Swindoll and Chuck Colson and other people not named Chuck. At this particular point in the drive, it happened to be Chuck Swindoll, and he was reading from the book of James. Did I mention that it was winter? Did I mention the snow squall that arose just as Mr. Swindoll got to the passage from James 4 that I read a minute ago? Did I tell you already about the road, how it was slippery? No? Well, now I have. Also, I was driving a Volkswagen Cabriolet. Some of you may remember that car, yellow with a white top. These vehicles were sporty and fun, but not terribly reliable, nor were they known for their traction. I'll just tell you now that I did not crash, but as I got to the top of the hill, and saw the sign for the highest point on Interstate 80. I was working hard to control the car as the back wheels sloshed around in the wintry mix that coated the road. This was a regular occurrence, and after several winters of owning that car, I was used to it. I had slowed down to about 30 miles per hour. The snow was falling sideways. I could barely see the sign. Elevation, 2250 feet. And Chuck Swindoll was saying, you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then is gone. Instead, Jim, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Was it my imagination or was he talking right to me? A couple of times now in this podcast over the last few episodes, you may have heard me say, we'll be back in your podcast feed in a couple of days Lord willing, or something to that effect. This habit of saying Lord willing was born on that day in late December of 1993 as I slid past the sign marking the highest point on Route 80 east of the Mississippi. The day that the Lord reminded me that my life and my future are in the Lord's hands, I really should not pretend otherwise. The story may sound a bit chilling, but as you will have guessed by now, I survived the experience. If I had relied on my own abilities and skills, as I had been doing until Chuck Swindoll talked some sense into me, maybe I wouldn't have survived. Maybe the fact that our lives are in the Lord's hands is actually good news. If you have an event, an experience, or a couple of verses of scripture that remind you of the reality that in God's hands is a pretty good place to be, let us know in the comments of this post on Facebook, or you can email them to me at templeumc at comcast.net. We will be back with you, Lord willing, in a couple of days. Until then, grace and peace to all. Instead, Jim, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Thank you, Mr. Loud Mufferless Truck, for driving by at the exact most important point of the podcast.